It is being filled by the present company that is operating now. You are refilling it now. Yes. Where is the example of it? You can go to that main tree mining framework to a much more rationally ordered, organized mining. Yes, they are aggregated. Yes, this is what we are doing. These are our calling all the states of Nigeria in all the local government. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very powerful analogy. Yes. We have to have that big job in our hands. We must increase the level of beneficiation exactly. and processing locally. Nigeria is richly blessed with abundant mineral resources, making the country one of the richest in solid mineral deposits in this part of the world. And until the advent of oil, it was a mining destination flourishing with mining activities, which accounted for a significant percent of the nation's earnings alongside agriculture. These minerals still abound and the occurrence in the country is such that there is no state in Nigeria that is without one form of deposit or the other. Though largely unexploited, quite a number of them are in great commercial quantity. It's been said that we have 44 mineral types, but some of us have said we have much more than that, because sometimes when you classify a mineral like gemstone, Nigeria has not, not less than about 16 different types of gemstones in commercial quantities. So if you just look at it and say gemstone, that's one group. And then when we also look at clays, we also we just say clays. But there are different types of clays in which Nigerians are, Nigeria is endowed with and in diverse commercial quantities that we have not even discovered that. So in terms of industrial minerals, like limestone, like marble, like clays, like shells, we are very well endowed. Studies indicate that solid mineral deposits are spread in more than 500 locations, out of which 44 have been identified and rated high in terms of commercial value. Some of the key ones that have proven reserves are the Nigerian coal discovered in 1909 in Enugu is adjudged as one of the best in the world because of its low sulfur and ash content which makes it environmentally friendly and most preferred. Nigeria has about 3 billion tons of coal reserves spread in 17 local fields, out of which 600 million is proven and most predominant in Kogi and Enugu states. As in the past, coal still holds huge potentials for Nigeria, with strong indications that its lost glory can be restored if properly harnessed. Gold, on the other hand, has proven reserves and found in large commercial quantity, mostly in northwest and southwest regions of the country. The Nigerian gold, which is alluvial type, is of high grade. Its production began in 1913 and reached its peak in 1930. Production, however, declined when the Second World War broke out and the mines were abandoned. Since then, Gold mining never recovered. Tin ore is also on the list of mineral deposits that once placed Nigeria on the map of mining countries of the world. Even though the mining of tin ore has suffered some setback on account of over-dependence on oil, Nigeria is nonetheless ranked 13th globally in tin production and placed third in Africa after Congo and Rwanda. It has also an estimated deposit of 570 metric tons and mostly found in Plateau, Bauchi and Abuja axis. Iron ore is another mineral that is found in Nigeria in parts of Kogi state. Nigeria's iron ore is ranked among the best in the world in terms of quality. It is in recognition of its importance that the federal government in 1979 established the National Iron Ore Mining Company and mandated it to explore, exploit, process 
and supply iron ore concentrates to Ajakuta and Delta Steel companies. Alongside these minerals are columbite, tantalite, wolframite and several others that have been rated as having the potentials of changing the economic fortunes of the country if properly harnessed. This optimism is anchored on past antecedents in the mining sector given the fact that the story of the mining industry in Nigeria dates back in time. Organized mining began in 1903 when the British colonial government created the Mining Survey of Northern Protectorate. The southern version of the company was established a year later in 1904. By 1940, Nigeria had climbed the global market to become a major exporter of tin, coal and columbite. During the 40s, 50s, to 60s, and even to uh, late 70s, uh, cities like Enugu and uh, Jos were identifying with were identified with mining uh, activities. And uh, right when we were in secondary school, we used to know that Enugu is known for coal, and Jos was known for uh, tin and uh, columbite. Nigeria actually had quite a, uh, if you like, a mining ecosystem. We, we had the Nigerian Mining Corporation, we had the Nigerian Coal Corporation, we had the National Steel Council, that was the time we started Ajao Kuta uh, Steel Complex, the Delta Steel Company, the four steel rolling mills, the Nigerian Machine Tools, the Iron Ore uh, uh, Mining Company. So. We, 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 we've always been in mining, and mining is as old as our history. This is now history. The mining sector in Nigeria is today a shadow of its former self. From the status of an exporter, Nigeria imports quite a number of her mineral requirements. For instance, domestic production of bitumen is just a little more than 20% while the shortfall is imported even as the nation has a deposit of 42 billion tons. This explains why the mining sector contributes only 0.34% to the nation's gross domestic product GDP as against the nearly 11% of crude oil. A combination of factors is responsible for the dwindling fortunes of this sector. The discovery of oil in 1956 is a major cause of the setback. In the First Republic, the ministers in charge of this sector were ministers of either mines and power or ministers of mineral resources in which petroleum used to be a tiny department. When uh, Dan Masson in Kano was the minister of mines, or when Alaji Shetima Limongono was the Minister of Mines, petroleum was a tiny portion of the overall mining portfolio. But the irony was that later, mining became a portion of petroleum resources. To be simplistic, to just say it is because oil was discovered and mining suffered. No. It was because oil government attention was not given to mining at the time oil was discovered so you don't blame the oil it's, in fact the oil process should have been used like what the other countries did they use their oil money to develop their agri sector they use their oil money to develop their hospitality and uh, uh, what do you call it Oil, hospitality sector, um, tourism sector, Dubai did. So other countries use the oil money as a blessing to develop other sectors. Algeria, they, are, they developed a robust gas industry. So all these countries, even Libya, if not for the war, they use the oil money and develop agri such that oil or not oil, you know, they have other sectors that will sustain them. But we made a mistake of uh, 
not developing uh, other sectors, and now we are paying for it. The outbreak of the civil war in 1967 was also a factor. It had a crippling effect on the sector. Expatriate mining experts left the country. The state of uneasiness at the time caused the abandonment of mining sites. Since then, mining in Nigeria has not been the same. Efforts by successive governments to restore the lost glory of the sector also had some forms of obstacles to overcome. The indigenization policy of government was one of them. And gradually, women interests was pulled out of the mining business. Nigeria Mining Corporation became disbanded. Government interests in the mining sector were sold. And while that is happening, the oil money is there. So, um, government decided not to actually pay so much attention to the mining sector. Other obstacles in the path of restoring the glory of the mining sector in Nigeria include lack of information, lack of technical know-how on the part of miners, lack of access to funding and lack of policy directions. The combined effect of all these is the relegation of the mining sector to the background. The first significant attempts in recent history to re-establish the mining glory of Nigeria took place in 1995 under the Abacha administration. That was when the Federal Ministry of Solid Minerals was created. The efforts were, however, not sustained. The mining reforms embarked upon by the Nigerian government in 2007 and supported by the World Bank, however, gave the mining sector a good structure and foundation. The World Bank supported the Nigerian government and there was a mining reform program where um, the, where the following were addressed. Uh, there was uh, a regulatory review in which the Mineral Mining Act was enacted. There was governance restructuring where uh, departments, about four departments in the ministries were created. Uh, there was support to the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency uh, to generate more data. The Nigerian Geological Agency Laboratory in, in Kaduna was republished. The Nigerian, mining and Inst the Nigerian Institute of Mining and Geosciences just was also uh, uh, renovated and equipped. Uh, a lot of training uh, you know, we are giving to the staff of the ministry. When the Buhari administration came into power in 2015, one major focus was the diversification of the economy. It was one of its campaign promises to use agriculture and mining as the tools of diversification. The policy thrust of this government in mining was to Increase revenue generation from solid minerals. Create jobs as well as ensure best standards in mining practices so as to reduce environmental degradation and the health risks involved in mining. Dr. Kayode Fayemi and Abubakar Bawabwari were appointed Minister and Minister of State for the Ministry with a clear mandate to translate government's policy to reality. For the first time in a long time, we changed all the federal mines of Israel. So you will have And because there is a focus, one of the first tasks by the policy drivers in this sector was to give the sector a plan that will stand the test of time. A roadmap was drawn up to guide the realization of government's aspirations in the sector. It was not the first roadmap ever to be drafted for the mining sector. 
but as stakeholders put it, it is a roadmap with a difference. Uh, our friends from the media, this is also, this can be accessed online on our website. This is the first time stakeholders from all the constituency that better off of mining industry were involved in the drafting of this uh, uh, roadmap. So the roadmap, uh, the Balofas includes the civil society, the academia, the miners, the professional bodies. Think of all stakeholders that are into the mining industry were adequately represented and a roadmap was finally drafted. The roadmap itself is, is a very brilliant document. It's not all that perfect because other things could come into it, but at least it gives a clear vision. It gives what you need to do step by step and I think that that's important. Another demonstration of this administration's commitment to really turn around the outlook and fortunes of the mining sector was its willingness to support mining activities with funding. Credit must go to the present administration. Uh, when we came in this sector 2015, the budget of this uh, ministry was uh, 1.2 billion out of which only about 380 billion was accessed. In 2016, under the present administration, the budget, budget rose to about uh, five point something billion, out of which uh, about 60% was accessed. In 2016, the budget rose to uh, 7.2 uh, billion, I think out of which about 56% was accessed. We know the downturn in the economy, we know the, 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 the... With all that, the present administration funded our part of the budget to the tune of about 56%. That is monumental. But today as I'm talking to you, um, there is a loan intervention that was packaged for the artisanal and small scale miners. I think about 5 billion naira, which is right now domiciled with the Bank of Industry. And I think they have started, they have made an advert and uh, they have started receiving application. Now, the federal government of Nigeria also approved 30 billion naira intervention form for the mining sector. You are asking of what they have done differently. In history, there is no government that has earmarked this kind of intervention for miners. And like stakeholders in the mining sector describe it, this administration has shown a commitment to the sector like never before, especially a commitment to the roadmap drawn up to guide the development of the sector. The oil to ensure that this motion aluminium does not stick. Now I've been on the other side. I'm a critic. I was formerly a president of Nigerian Mining and Geoscience Society. You have advised governments over the years, and of course, it's like whatever you are saying, you're saying it to yourself. But I think we are getting it right now because not only are they listening to advice, they are using those advice and they are, they are following the template. I can assure you, majority of professionals, geologists in this country, are happy with the rate at which the solid mineral sector is developing. It could be better. It could be much, much better. But I think what we are seeing now shows that there is a seriousness in really, really tapping this dormant you know, uh, uh, treasure that could get Nigeria out of the, wood, the woods.
if such an opportunity will buy your data, uh, if you have that ability. The appeal from stakeholders, however, is that government should continue to do those things it has committed to do to bring the mining sector back to a state of relevance. So government must strive to maintain a set of individuals who have performed very well in a particular sector so that the people who interface with that sector can have a level of confidence. That is another fundamental matter. And I uh, also commend him for carrying stakeholders along because ministers' base will not be best without carrying the stakeholders. Uh, by carrying the stakeholders, the stakeholders are now under obligation to explain to the general public because stakeholders are representation of different constituencies. Like now, I'm representing the miners, and I have been involved in what the ministry is doing. I'm now under obligation to explain to the miners the real situation. And I should be in the position to answer questions because I'm part of what is happening. So that uh, style of leadership for me is commendable. And um, I hope uh, that is a setting of a precedence. The wind of change is blowing in the mining sector. Institutions are being strengthened. Capacity is being built. There is light at the end of the tunnel and hope that the mining sector can contribute over 3% of the nation's GDP in the next 10 years.